A woman suffered from nasal congestion for 23 years. Through early years, she has been diagnosed with sinusitis, lung infection, and allergy. All were thought to be the reason behind her sinus congestion. However, every diagnosis was a failure. This is what happened to her lungs at the age of 47. Welcome back my amigos, I'm Arij and I present rare medical cases through stories. Since this is a new channel, please make sure to leave a small like. Since her childhood, Emily grew up to be a bright girl, very intelligent girl. She didn't spend a lot of time with her friends, she didn't have that amazing social life, but however she did have a passion for the chess game, a world that her grandpa described as a world full of silence, where thoughts are to be invented or assassinated in that small wooden square. After her grandpa passed away, she vowed to herself to be the best at the game, to master it. She was in love with the idea that the queen in this wooden box never bows down until her whole army is caught and eliminated. My amigo, you and I might disagree that the chess game is a pure talent or an experience that you develop through playing, but it is not debatable that this game requires a lot of thinking. Mind the tricks. Emily in her late 20s, after several years of mastering the game and being so good at it actually, she started to lose a lot of rounds after it was very rare for her to lose, especially playing with the same opponent that she used to win over. And it was due that sometimes she would reach a certain moment during the game that literally her head hurts from thinking, as she always suffered from her nasal congestion, which at some point made it hard for her to think or even breathe right. Her nasal congestion was not a temporary thing over season or the first of winter, the middle of winter, no, it was all around the year that got even worse and intensified through time and years. It was sadly very rare that she would have a nasal congestion free day. And every time she lost a round, she would think that her nasal congestion is just a lame excuse. But it was never the case. Because she noticed that every time she loses a game, her nasal congestion normally is very intensified. And normally it leads her to a severe headache, get overwhelmed and surrender from the game. Through her early 30s, her nasal congestion even intensified more. Despite using nasal sprays that, that promised her by physicians that it will decrease her symptoms but nothing really worked and she soon would start losing her passion for this amazing game but things didn't settle for only nasal congestion soon she would also have a various lung infections that she would treat correctly with the right antibiotic dose her family and friends would always explain that maybe it's due to the harsh weather they live in at 33 years of age one of the doctors diagnosed Emily that maybe she has a kind of allergy that is triggering her nasal congestion. She did a skin allergy test that revealed she has allergy on dust, grass, and also cats. Also, blood test revealed allergy on eggs, milk, gluten, and many other cereals, which forced her to go into a strict diet, especially against milk, eggs, and cereals, for the rest of her life. And she was really committed. The first five years after the diagnosis of allergy, it didn't go away, but it was much better with less episodes of nasal congestion and she would soon find herself going back to the wooden square playing chess but despite using her medications despite her strict diet after five years the nasal congestion came back the same or even worse than before and now Emily's ambitious girl who only believed in positivity found herself sliding into a world of depression she found herself being dragged into negativity and feeling hopeless three years before admitting to the hospital, Emily started to have a cough, a continuous cough, all day, all night. She was diagnosed after it with pneumonia and was given the right antibiotics. But after that event, she found herself swinging between sinusitis and a lung infection, and it was very abnormal. As hard as it sounds, but she got used to these health issues every now and then, and she was a few months before her wedding that she started to have felgum, a productive cough it became, and she would have yellow or green falgum mucus every time she coughs and with time it intensified in quantity more yellowish and greenish she would have trouble speaking with people without clearing her throat or coughing she would even sometimes lose the taste of food until one night she woke up feeling suffocated from the quantity the huge quantity of coughing a lot of falgum that she nearly suffocated she started to have trouble even breathing right and that is when she died 911 and got to the hospital 
to the emergency department. In the hospital now, Emily is well oriented and fully aware. Her respiratory rate was 12 breaths per minute, which is good. Her vital signs from blood pressure to her heartbeat is also normal. Despite her complaint of shortness of breath, the oximeter revealed 99% of oxygen inside her blood. The doctor noticed that she had a crackle sound in her lungs. To know what the sound feels like, it's like putting a sponge in a jar of honey and then squeezing it. That's the sound of the crackle, which frankly indicates the presence of fluid inside the lungs. Heavy and thick mucus apparently. But what could be the nature of this thick fluid, especially that she complained from a heavy feeling when she exhales? Now coming to her family history, it didn't help a lot. Eight years ago, she removed a benign tumor from her breast. Three years ago, she did a tonsillectomy, which is the removal of the tonsils. But the rest of her family history does not raise any question. Emily is a non-smoker. She doesn't drink alcohol. Also, her house and work environment are far away from any cities, so away from the smoke of car and factories, which means she is not exposed to polluted air. The next step, apparently, was an MRI for her lungs, and what they saw was beyond her symptoms and even beyond doctor expectations. They saw that she had bronchiectasis, which is a condition that bronchioles get filled with fluid. They get loosened, they lose their stiffness, they get scarred, and their function decrease. The bronchioles, which are tubes to carry air, are now filled with thick mucus. This case is not common, but however, it's very dangerous. The question now was, how did she even get bronchiectasis? The doctors were explaining how worse her lungs got, and she was overwhelmed, feeling sad that how could this happen to her when she doesn't even smoke. But before digging into doctor's investigation to get the right diagnosis of why bronchiectasis happened to her, first, what is sinus actually? What do they do and why do they exist? I want you to imagine them as four rooms, empty rooms. The largest room of them is called the maxillary sinus. From its name, maxillary bone. That's why it's called maxillary sinus. But it's not because it's the largest, it means that all the sinus congestion and sinusitis is caused by it. Commonly, the esmoidal sinus also share in the cause of sinus congestion or sinusitis. Even though it's a lot smaller. You said four areas, well, there's two left. Yes, the sphenoidal and the frontal sinus, which are pretty much innocent. Now, what is their function? Firstly, humidifying and the heating of the air we breathe, especially in cold weather. The air we breathe would normally circulate inside the sinus, very fast of course, and the mucus inside it will humidify it until it reaches our lungs. And that's why it's better to breathe from your nose and exhale from your mouth. Is it the only role of sinus? No. It has another role in our voice, in how our voice sounds. It intensifies the echo of our vocals. That's why when you have a sinusitis or nasal congestion, or you have a flu, let's say, that's why your sound gets more deep. Now that we know what does the sinus do and where it is located, let's move on to the case. What caused her lungs to reach the level of bronchiectasis? And all they have from data is a history of nasal congestion accompanied with lung infection through the years. Normally, if you're a pharmacist or a health staff and someone comes with these kinds of symptoms, the lung infection and the crackle sound and the non-stop productive cough, you would directly think of COPD, chronic obstetrics obstructive pulmonary disease because the symptoms are very similar especially if this patient smokes it would be a direct and frank diagnosis because the COPD happen by exposing the lungs on a long term of polluted air or toxins and the big example is smoking okay great now what's the plot twist here is that Emily doesn't smoke additionally none of her family members smoke plus even her environment of living is very healthy now the bronchiectasis is caused by by a long term of repeated lung infections through time, which cause the bronchioles that are normally stiff, especially from the upper respiratory tract, to be loosened, to get scarred all over the bronchioles, and it gets filled with mucus, heavy, thick mucus. So at the end game, it will have the same symptoms of COPD. Now, why does she have trouble breathing? Well, we have to understand the anatomy of bronchiectasis now. I want you to think of the bronchioles from the start of the lungs. They are composed of two things, cartilage and a smooth muscle. Now, when we get deeper in 
into the bronchioles. Deeper more into the lungs, the percentage of the cartilage will decrease and the percentage of smooth muscle will increase. And that's normal because the existence of cartilage will make it hard for it to be elastic and to go right and left deeper into the lungs. That's why when we go deep and deep until reaching the alveoli sacs that carry on the exchange of air, oxygen and carbon dioxide, on this level we will only have smooth muscle. In the bronchiectasis, these deep and roots will be cluttered, will go out of function during bronchiectasis. And so now all the mucus becomes heavy and thick and gets centered in the main bronchioles. That's why it becomes heavy to breathe, especially exhale. And these bronchioles, which are filled with mucus, will start to gather more and more dust particles and toxins. And this explains the symptoms of Emily. Her many lung infections explains the long-term productive cough, explains the yellow and greenish felgum expelled every day from her mouth. Now back to Emily's case, she thought to herself that being diagnosed with bronchiectasis is not really fair. I mean, she doesn't even smoke. But to be clear, bronchiectasis is not always caused by smoking. It has other reasons. One of the most common bacteria to cause bronchiectasis is the mycobacterium tuberculosis. But it was soon ruled out because Emily doesn't have any risk factor for tuberculosis. Neither did she have any symptoms of tuberculosis like high fever, weight loss, night sweats. Furthermore, it was ruled out by testing of the mucus of Emily's. Another bacteria that would cause bronchiectasis is the Bordetella pertussis, which is known by the 100-day cough, which made sense because three years ago, Emily started to have a productive, continuous cough that is still till this day. But it was also ruled out because Emily had a vaccination against Bordetella. There is still a chance that the vaccine may have worn off, but anyhow, it was ruled out with blood testing. Now, the third choice they had from bacteria infection was pneumonia, not a normal pneumonia. Pneumonia that is recurrent through short time spans between each one, especially if there was a symptom of chronic aspiration, which means breathing in things you shouldn't breathe. It may be food, it may be vomit, it may be even liquid, but also it was ruled out since Emily had only one episode of pneumonia, plus she didn't complain from any chronic aspiration from the previous time of infections. Now we have excluded three of the most common bacteria to cause bronchiectasis. None of them is the reason behind her bronchiectasis. But to be fair, it's not always bacteria causing bronchiectasis. It could be in fact our own body causing bronchiectasis. Examples, there is a disease called x link a gamma globulinemia or short term XLA, which is a genetic disease that affects our immune system, which in a role targets the B cells, lymphocytes, therefore affecting the ability of our immune system to produce antibodies that normally would fight toxins and any toxic component. By this way, any patient who has this disease would always suffer from any type of infection and he could easily get sick because there are no antibodies fighting whatever toxins are entering our system. And if the lungs suffer from ongoing lung infections, the end game here will of course be bronchiectasis. However, this disease doesn't apply on Emily because it normally appears from childhood, even nine months of age, and Emily didn't have it. One of the doctors out of desperation decided to go back to the first diagnosis, which was allergy, triggering her sinus congestion. And they researched a fungus infection that is called Aspergillus fumigatus. And I don't know why, but this name reminds me of the dark web. So what this disease is all about, that when some people get in contact, especially in smelling this type of fungus, some of them, not all, some of them might have an allergic reaction that is so intensified that it triggers our whole immune system. So in return, our immune system produces a huge amount of antibodies. It increases the eosinophils, increases the immunoglobin E, and the whole body is a mess. And especially talking here in the lungs area. And of course, it will be an ongoing inflammation inside the lungs. This medical condition is called allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillus. And the doctor said, why not? I mean, she has a garden. She lives in mountains. Maybe she's getting exposed from the water she used to clean, to shower. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. They did the test and it was ruled out. There was no aspergillus fumigatus. The doctors felt that they are reaching a dead end again. And all what was Emily asking for was an explanation, an answer for what is happening to her. After a few days and the doctor's collaboration from other universities and a lot of research, and at the end, they reached two diagnoses. One of these diagnoses,
diagnosis was cystic fibrosis, which is also a genetic disease. Exactly, it's called the CFTR mutation. The result of this gene mutation is the excessive production of felgum and mucus that they get stuck in the bronchioles and they would gather dust particles and toxins, making like a blockage to the airways. And the end game here will be bronchiectasis for sure. Now, the second diagnosis, which I preferred more, was the primary ciliary dyskinesia, also another genetic mutation. From its name, ciliary, it affects the cilia inside our lungs, this hair-like structure that its main role is to clean our lungs by moving mucus. Now, in primary ciliary dyskinesia, the cilia inside the patient's lungs do not move, when in fact they should move. How do they move? Using ATP, because they have a cell base that gives ATP, the energy. However, in this genetic mutation, the cilia doesn't receive any ATP. If it doesn't receive any ATP, it doesn't move. If it doesn't move, it doesn't clean our lungs, which also at the end might end in bronchiectasis. And my amigos, these are the two diagnoses that were presented to Emily. She could do more tests to confirm them, but it would take a lot of money. But she decided to settle for the doctor's diagnosis and took the suitable drugs to decrease her symptoms because unfortunately the bronchiectasis is not a curable disease. We only manage symptoms. Most of the times she had to use portable oxygen machine. It didn't cure her but was enough to not send her back to the hospital. She continued to have a productive cough and she continued to have shortness of breath sometimes. She go for a run, ride a bicycle and for sure this type of living is not encouraging to anyone but still she felt blessed that she's still alive and still breathing. Few months after discharge from the hospital, Emily got married and till this day she continues to live somehow a happy life. Avish was with you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. See you in the next episode.